We now hear our first story of hope and recovery honoring National Recovery Month with Tom Spooner, former Delta operator and Warriors Heart president. Welcome to the show, Tom. Marcy, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. It's so wonderful to have you on, especially, especially during National Recovery Month and just really share your story and all that you have done and, and continue to do. So let's talk about your 21 years of service in the U.S. Army as a Delta operator and how that changed your life. Okay, uh, so I, I'll try to keep it quick because uh, I came in the Army in 1990. So I was uh, as a private, I went straight to the Gulf War. So I went from being a civilian to right into war. So that helped shape you know, the kind of soldier that I was going to be from there out. So I spent five years in the 82nd Airborne Division. Then I spent six years in 7th Special Forces Group, where I worked in Central and South America. And then uh, September of 2001, I went out to uh, Delta Selection and made it. And I was uh, out there from 2001 to 2011. I did... Uh, 12 deployments and have three and a half years total time in combat. Mm. Mm. The, thing, the thing about that was, is that what enabled all of that to happen was I got sober back in 1992. So, you know, without me being sober, my military career would have been much shorter uh, and for sure not as accomplished. Right. So you got sober before you went into the military. Two years after I was in. So I was super high functioning, uh, alcoholic. First two years I was in was a uh -huh. golden boy doing good. But personally, I was wrecked. Uh, yeah. So I got sober and uh, and then, you know, that enabled me to do all those different things. And then once I got out in 2011, uh, I taught law enforcement for quite a while because I didn't want to learn anything new. Uh, so I just yeah. did what I was good at and had a resume for and then in 2015 uh, is when we started Warrior's Heart. Uh, so from 2016 wow. until currently, we've had over 2,100 warriors come through our program. Uh, yeah. And super proud and excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, let's talk about the strength that you had to overcome your addiction during that time. And why alcoholism is so prevalent in the military. Um, so why don't you share with us about that? Yeah, for me, I mean, a lot of, a, a lot of folks that join the military, not all by any means, but a lot of folks, you know, like I'll just use me for an example. You know, the military was my way out of a really not that great situation and not uh, much of a future, you know, so um the thing about the military and uh, is, you know, drinking is a part of the culture and I'm by no means anti-drinking. Uh, you know, I'm just against if it's wrecking your life and destroying your career, uh, yeah. there's a problem with that, you know? So, um, so that, that's a big part of it, but I proved that even in special operations, you know, Hey, you can get sober and you can stay sober and have a really good career and be an incredible soldier. Uh, you know, if anything, you know, obviously it just enhanced my abilities because I didn't, I didn't have uh, to struggle with chemical dependencies the way that I did young. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the culture mm -hmm. for first responders and military. I mean, what is that really like? Uh, I, I would think that alcoholism or alcohol is a big way to uh, escape. It is, is uh, you know, and it's legal. That's the thing about alcohol, you know, it's, uh, you know, you can do it. And, um, but it was, it was, uh, it was a big problem for me. Um, but I would say that there's a lot of people, you know, in the military that, uh, you know, that don't struggle with alcoholism. Uh, they may drink a little bit too much or they, you know, may drink too often, but it's, uh, um, it's a big part of the culture. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't yeah. really, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough one. But the thing is, is that if people identify or leadership identifies that one of their folks has problems, you know, nowadays there's so many options uh, to choose from as far as like actually seeking right. and help. Yeah. And that's something you're doing now with Warrior's Heart. And so that's a peer-to-peer -peer healing inpatient treatment program. 
So tell us more about what you are doing and how that's helping others. Absolutely. Um, so Warrior's Heart is a 42-day inpatient uh, treatment program, and the population of Warrior's Heart uh, is just the warrior population, meaning it's active duty military, vet, military veterans, uh, active law enforcement or, or retired uh, firefighters, EMTs, basically anyone who faces life and death uh, on a daily basis as a profession. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. what creates, like you had mentioned, that peer-to-peer -peer network, which is really, really important for this population because even though everyone has to do the same thing in sobriety and you know, in the same steps and principles and everything that we have to live by, it's, it's much different. I mean, uh, for say a law enforcement officer could be sitting next to someone a drug dealer that he had arrested, you know, and obviously they have right. to do the thing, same things, but uh, there's no peer network going to come out of that, you know, and the same thing, like a, a soldier sat next to a business guy, um, you know what I mean? It just, you can't create that. So that's why we kept the population just that. So it's an instant peer network, which we know how strong a peer network is. Mm, yeah, absolutely. But is, is the foundation, the 12 step program? The foundation is a 12 step program. And then uh, what we do different at Warrior's Heart is uh, in a lot of places, they segment everything off like, uh, hey, your combat trauma, you need to go to the behavioral health folks. Hey, if you have chemical dependencies, you go over here. Uh, but we're whole humans, right? So uh, we know you can't treat one without the other. Is it the trauma that's driving the drinking and drugging, or is it the drinking and drugging that brings up the trauma? Who cares? Uh, let's treat them both, uh, mm. and, you know, and get hold again. So at Warrior's Heart, that's what we do. We have our licensed chemical dependency counselors. We have our 12-step programs and group meetings. And then we have our individual sessions with uh, chemical dependency counselors and trauma counselors or dual therapists. What about the families? Is there any support for the families or is there something you could say to the families that maybe are in need or trying to get help for someone? Yeah, the initial step is, you know, get the family member uh, the help that they need. You know, we call it getting cleaned up and getting trained up, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And then once that is in place, and a lot of times it happens, you know, at Warrior's Heart where the, the therapist will have family sessions with, uh, with the family members. Uh, so the main focus initially, because it's just that initial 42 days, which seems like a long time, but it's really not, you know, so it's a lot of focus and emphasis on the individual and then incorporating the family into it. Uh, you know, COVID really shut down our in-house kind of family programming, but now that it, everything is opening back up more, you know, we'll be able to do more of that. Yeah. What about once you you graduate that 42 days? What happens then? So we have, uh, you know, everybody comes from a different place. We, we treat, we meet them where they are. We have some of our clients that are, have been homeless for years. And then we have other clients that are on active duty or active law enforcement, firefighters who haven't gotten in trouble, but they know it's a problem and, you know, and they need to do it. So that's a big, wide gamut. Um, mm -hmm. so some folks come in for 42 days, get cleaned up, trained up, and then they're back, they're back out, you know, back yeah. into the fight, back into the living, uh, other folks, you know, need more training. So we have uh, our intensive outpatient treatment. We also have sober, our sober living, uh, and then we also offer Merck brain treatment also. So there's multiple different, uh, we kind of started up Warriors Anonymous. So it's just a specialty group uh, within AA that just keeps mm -hmm. that population together to, for continued aftercare, you know, and they yeah. can always reach back to us. I myself am about to celebrate seven years of sobriety wow. myself. And Congratulations. The, thank you. And the 12 step program was just a gift and continues to be that. I, I've learned to live just such a, a different life and a full life. And it, it really changes your thinking. And uh, it is a lot about, the, for me, it was the trauma. Mm -hmm. So I, I can relate to a lot of what you're saying, but obviously if you're coming from um, a first responders or military, I mean, I feel like you're constantly seeing, you know, being traumatized in ways. So this would be something that 
would be ongoing that you would need help and support with. Absolutely. And that's what, and that's what some folks, again, um, you know, trauma is such a, a individual thing. You know, you and mm -hmm. I could have experienced the same traumatic event and you're okay and you process it, you know, and you kind of move on and then, you know, it wrecks me and I can't get past it and I need professional help, you know? So, so some folks, you know what I mean? Like myself, you know, it is ongoing, you know, when yeah. needed, you know, as far as that piece, but I'm there with you on the 12 steps, you know, is, is the vehicle that carries me through life. You know, um, yeah. I'm right there with you on that. And congratulations on seven years. That's a very yeah. big deal. And that's Thank seven you. years in a row, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> seven years in a row right that's a big and it's deal. okay to it listen it's okay to fail i mean expect Absolutely. it just as long as you start moving forward again so what would you say to all of those uh the message to those warriors out there that are feeling lonely the feeling maybe that they can't do this yeah so the first thing that i would say is number one uh, is that you're not alone uh there's a lot of us that suffer with the same things uh, and that there's hope, uh, you know, but you got to take action, you know, uh, you, there's hope, you're not alone, uh, and get your family members involved if you can't do it yourself or your friends and, uh, you know, get on with the business of life because it's a life worth living. Oh, it is. It is. There's so many tools that you learn yes. and um, it's incredible. And if you don't know those tools, you're always going to fall back to those negative coping mechanisms. So thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing part of your story and the wonderful things that you're doing for others uh, in the recovery space now. And thank you for having me, Marcy. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Bye-bye, Tom. Bye-bye.